flexural equilibrium where the radii have been removed, that is explosives. And, and his equilibrium is, is a very a completely unstable condition. <laughs> that is, when, uh, when we first had submarines, we used to fill the water ballast tanks so it was just at equilibrium. <laughs> and then if anybody happened to just drop a monkey wrench over, we could throw the balance out and they would tend to nose over and, and get into radio trouble. When we began flying, then we came to what we call the star. <coughs> the star is simply a point when at the equilibrium at the star, anything can happen, can go any kind of a spin. Mm. Nature abhors that equilibrium. She always, or everything you and I know will always be one side or the other of the equilibrium. At any rate, this is the most expansive form of the of these vectors that I gave you. Now here's vector equilibrium. Can can you can everybody see this all right? And I'm going to take this top face and move it lower it towards the face on the floor. And this top triangle is not allowed to twist. You can only approach the triangle on the floor. You've got two planes approaching each other. Understand? So this means this vertex will always be towards you. Yeah. And the vertex on the floor is towards me. So I'm going to do this. Suddenly, it's collapsed to where the squirrels are changing. They become diamonds, then ridgepole diamonds. Now the distance between the, the vertexes is such that the line is exactly the same as the other vectors. Therefore, I put in six vectors there and you have the icosahedron. This is the icosahedron. Vector equilibrium then comes down to the first stable form, which is the icosahedron. The vector equilibrium itself consisted of eight tetrahedra, each of a volume of one, six one-half octahedra, a half octahedra is two, so six of two is twelve, twelve and, and eight are twenty. The vector equilibrium volume is twenty. And so it now collapses, correct. I want to say that twentiness of the vector equilibrium gets tightened up into the icosahedron with another set of vectors. The, 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 in the, six more are introduced, or one more unit of quantum. <laughs> now I'm going to keep lowering that triangle, towards the one the floor, not twisting at all. And now it suddenly contracts to become the octahedron. This is a very beautiful thing you watch. All vertexes approach common center at a, a common rate. It's absolutely symmetrical expansion comes by up here and now contracts the other way. But the the axis in my hands never rotates. Only the only the equator is rotating. Now I can go supposing this is rotating in space, this group of stars, there's a, a mass there's a mass attraction pull of another set of stars. And one then this is trying to turn, and then it restrains this. It, what, what happens when you do that would be then, I move this around, it forces it to contract. If it's being forced to contract that way, then, remember, notice it's rotating this way. This rotates more and plunges right through and becomes the tetrahedron. We've gone all the way from vector equilibrium, icosahedron, octahedron, vector equilibrium. The octahedron is double bonded, tetrahedron is quadruple bonded, quadrivalent we call it. This way diamonds are in respect to carbon. <coughs> we have no, no point that we break open. So the maximum space employed by unity is, is a vector equilibrium, but all the structures are within it. <laughs> they're, they're contracted form from the whole. Now notice that this can then tetrahedron, I, I had it plunge that through like that, this can then immediately reverse itself and tetrahedron can turn inside out. <laughs> Just does Just absolutely spontaneously. Just basic pumping. Okay. <coughs> that, that, that identifies vector equilibrium and introduces a hierarchy of accounting. <laughs> Let's see.